Hi, Georgina. Hi. <laughs> so we worked together a bit more than three months ago, I think. Yes. Right? Yeah. In, yeah. So, so I. Yeah. Um, so let's start in the beginning. Um, so about three months ago, and then you offered to share your story. Thank you for that. Uh, I have some questions from moms who are going through what you were going through back then. So I'm going to include those. Okay. If you could share, uh, when did you realize that there was a problem the first time? Yeah. So um, I breastfed and pumped and bottle fed um, almost from the beginning. Um, so I had eight weeks off of maternity leave and um, Will, my little boy stayed home with my husband, um, for another four weeks. So he didn't go to daycare until he was 12 weeks. And in those four weeks of being home with Tyler and taking the bottle, we did notice that he definitely had a preference to breastfeed versus bottle feeding. Um, also within that 12 weeks, we weren't sleep training exactly, but we were trying to kind of lay the groundwork and I was doing dream feeds, um, in the middle of the night and trying to get those longer stretches. And we also had those two month shots and the, the oral medicine or whatever, you know, that they give. Yeah. The rotavirus. Yeah. And so, um, to be honest, I can't really pinpoint what the cause was, but, I know that the week he started daycare, I knew something was wrong. Um, at that 12 week mark, I knew that what my friends were telling me that their babies were doing, what the babies in the class were doing was not what my baby was doing. And take the comparison out of it. I knew that my baby was not gaining weight. And at the end so, of the day, sorry, what was he doing? So what was he doing that? was different than other babies nothing he wasn't crying for the bottle he was never showing any signs of hunger cues it got to the point where even with nursing he was only nursing for a few minutes um mm -hmm. and I could even tell with my pumping sessions I was getting less and less when I was pumping at those same feeding times when I was at work so I didn't think that he was getting stronger and therefore just getting more milk out faster. Um, I very much started to panic. I didn't even know what a, a version bottle breast. I didn't know any of that at the time. All I knew was that my baby wasn't eating. He didn't want to eat and therefore he wasn't gaining any weight. And that was, that was all that I could see in my mind was the problem was my baby wasn't eating and he wasn't gaining weight, but he was happy. <laughs> he wasn't ever, ever, even the teachers at daycare, you know, like, oh, he's just, he's just an angel baby. He just wants to be held and he never cries and he never asks for the bottle. And that, I mean, I really started to panic, you know? Um, so months and months go by and we have doctor's appointments and doctor's appointments and doctor's so so what was the the point when you decided or realized okay I need help so when was that how long did this go on when after you realized okay I cannot do this it's not gonna get better I need help so I think there were a lot of different points in that um we went to several different doctor's appointments of weight checks and it was a true mental spiral for me, um, being postpartum to begin with, you know, is, yeah. is not a great time, but to add something like this on, on top of it was just beyond, just beyond. Um, and I think at our four month checkup, when I went in and he only weighed like 12 pounds, I'm going to get emotional about it now. Um, he only weighed like 12 pounds. He hadn't gained any weight from like the two and a half month mark to that four month appointment, um, I knew that something was wrong and that validated everything that I had kept saying to the doctors mm -hmm. in between those appointments of saying, you know, he's not eating, he never shows hunger cues. And at that point, not only did I like truly start to panic, it was like my worst fear of that I was right, that something was wrong, but I didn't know what. And at those doctor's appointments, much like, you know, you talk about all the time is 
well, let's try medicine and let's go to a feeding specialist or which I, all of those things are definitely necessary in certain situations. Um, and we had explored all of those options. We were on, we eventually so did. Get did you start with the medication first for yeah. reflux? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're diagnosed with silent reflux, which is obviously very mm -hmm. common for something like this. Yeah. Um, because the doctors had asked, does he spit up all the time? And I said, well, no, because he didn't. Um, he never really showed agitated, you know, being agitated, um, laying down or any of those common symptoms other than not wanting to eat. Yeah. Um, so yes, we started with, um, the reflex medicine and within that same appointment, I mean, at this point we are probably month four, month five. Um, I have switched pediatricians because my first pediatrician told me if he wasn't going to eat, well, at the first appointment of me in a set of panic was probably like two and a half, three months. That appointment, my pediatrician at the time told me, um, a, a baby will eat when he's hungry. A baby won't starve themselves. And sure in the moment, you know, like, okay, that's, that's comforting. But my baby was not eating when he was hungry and he was starving himself. So you know, I knew something was wrong. Yeah. Um, we then went back at, for another weight check-in at some point and the doctor then same doctor then told me, well, if he's not going to eat, you're just going to have to force him. And at this point I had read enough. I still didn't really know what a bottle aversion was, but I had read enough to know not to create a negative connotation with feeding. I didn't know how to fix it or how to solve it, but I knew not to do that. Um, yeah. and I just, I, 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 for lack of better words, I just kind of spiraled from that appointment myself because how could a doctor be telling me something that I know is wrong? And yeah, it's crazy. And it's and so it's, common, unfortunately. It is common. Yeah. And it's telling me that he's fine, even though he is seeing on the scale that he is very much not fine. Um, so I was really frustrated. So I ended up going to a new pediatrician. Um, who doesn't know much about bottle aversions either, but he was so open to learning and, um, read up on things for me and was extremely helpful. We did see a feeding specialist just because like, it couldn't hurt at that point. I would have tried waving a magic wand. So you, know you, you tried the, the reflex medication first or, or simultaneously you did the feeding. Okay. Yeah. Simultaneously. Um, so we did both. We don't necessarily know, you know, what helped one or the other. I don't think either hurt, you know, I don't, I don't not think he didn't have a little bit of reflux in him. Um, and I do think if you do feeding therapy, they do a lot of stretches on an infant. And I do think those helped, but it wasn't the root cause of the bottle aversion. Um, I think so it might have things been get better a part of it slightly. Yes. Okay. Um, I would not say he wanted to eat, but he was eating more when he was eating. And by mm -hmm. more, I, I hate the Instagram posts of, of just the comparison of what babies eat, because I think for a mom who has struggled with this, that can really get in their mind. So I do not say this for anybody to compare, but my baby in those times, he was eating every three hours. Um, and he was maybe eating two ounces. So mm. it was that just was when things got better. Uh, no, that was, that was the lowest we were eating. Maybe okay. two ounces. at this point, he was eating maybe two and a half, maybe three ounces. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, like an extra ounce, like, thank God, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. was just, I was thrilled that he was eating anything. So, yeah. um, we did that. And then I, still noticed that it was still a fight. We, the, the line in the sand for us was I had gone to visit my parents. Um, and my definition of a bottle aversion is when at the time was when a baby is just screaming at the side of a bottle, doesn't even want to go near it. Well, Will had never really done that. He always took the bottle. He just was only drinking an ounce, two ounce here and there. Or even when I was breastfeeding him was only feeding two, three minutes aside, 
it was never that he was completely rejecting it. So I was thinking like, well, this can't be a bottle aversion because he doesn't really mind the bottle. But when we had gone back to my hometown, I had tried to feed him in a place that he had never taken a bottle before, um, very much outside of his element. And it was a full blown scream and panic would not even, I am holding him and I'm trying to pick the bottle up out of the bottle warmer. And it is a full blown meltdown from him. And he was just never that kind of a baby to have a cry like that. Mm -hmm. And I just knew the moment that happened. I knew that entire day he probably, that was probably the worst Uh, that entire day he drank less than 10 ounces. I know that it had to have been seven or eight. And I just, that was the lowest. I'm just, that was the lowest of the low. That was awful. And so I, it's like three in the morning and I am Googling what a bottle aversion is and how to solve it. And so did you know about bottle aversion at this uh, point or you just find it after Yes, uh, this happened? version yes I knew what it was but I didn't know how to solve it um yeah and my doctors had kind of told me like oh, it's not really a thing you know like hungry babies will eat mm-hmm. not the case <laughs> you know yeah. not not true. we tried one method and it absolutely did not work for us um and that was probably month five um uh-huh. month so five, like a my- month after the the four months Uh, yeah right yeah um and my husband took a took two weeks off of work um he has a much more flexible schedule than I do so he took two weeks off of work to do um that certain program and it did work for a while but it is very regimented and very structured um and it just it it didn't long term it did not work Mm -hmm. um it solved it for a little bit and it did get better but um I mean, it, it didn't hold up long-term, so it, it definitely came back or maybe it didn't get solved totally. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but we did so have how a- long after it came back. So it helped a bit. And then how long after it came I back? I would say probably a month. Um, okay. I do think it was teething. I do think that kind of started a spiral for both of us. I think he didn't want to eat and I panicked again. I think mm-hmm. that was very much the spiral for us. Um, and then I, so this is probably late June, I think is when I found you June, July. And I was searching the hashtag on Instagram just to read any information that I could get, because at this point in my mind, we had already done a class. We had already done the work. We already knew the tools. What else could I possibly learn at this point? Like it's me, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm the problem. And I just, I mentally was in such a bad place because of that. Um, And so I found your Instagram on, from searching the hashtag. um, And I was watching a bunch of your reels and watched through all of your stories and found that you had a class. Um, And I purchased your class that night. And I think we started the program within just a couple of days. So Will at that point he was eight months um and so sorry what what was the thing that let you know that it's different or what was the thing that attracted you to my uh, solution your um hands-on approach because at this point I didn't know what to do I could read a textbook about it but that wasn't going to help me I needed someone who could give me which is exactly what you did but I needed someone who could give me step-by-step instructions because at that point I was so far in it. I was so depressed. I was so beyond anxious. I couldn't help myself. I could have read that two plus two was four, you know, but in my mind, I could not comprehend that. And so I was so worked up and so scared that I, I just needed somebody to literally hold my hand and walk me through it Mm -hmm. because again, like I had already solved it, you know? So like, therefore I broke him. And that's all I kept saying was that like, I have, I broke him and I just couldn't Mm -hmm. get over. So I can imagine the guilt. Yeah. 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 
And did you have any um, anxiety before we started working together? Because many moms have fears and anxiety before starting to yes. work on solving, not just with me, but just in general solving this. Did you have any of that? Yeah. Um, I think I had a lot of postpartum anxiety that I didn't really get addressed. And I think adding the bottle aversion on top of that just escalated things exponentially. I mean, it was just, I say it all the time, but it's just nothing that I would wish on my worst enemy. It was awful. Um, and yeah. to be a new mom and a first time mom and to be dealing with the hormone changes. And on top of that, this is just how I relate it to anybody who like, can't understand how I was feeling, which nobody should ever understand this, but it should be I say should, I, I would never want anybody to feel this, but it should be the most natural thing to feed your baby. And I couldn't do that. And I yeah. just felt like the biggest failure. Like that's just, it's just the only way I can describe it is that is yeah, the most. I, I, had, I felt the same. Yeah. No? And uh, did you have any fear uh, like, oh, we're going to start working together and then what's going to happen? Did you have any fear uh, about that a apart from this general anxiety? Uh, and no, no, because I truly felt like at that point, it could only help. It could only, mm -hmm. even if it changed by one ounce, you know, it could only help. So no, I didn't have any fear in that. My fear was always, well, is always, it is still in the back of my head, you know, but my fear is always like, what if it comes back, you know, mm -hmm. and you do have to walk yourself through the steps again. Um, and it does make you panic. And I think that's only human nature. Um, but that was, that was only ever my fear was that it would come back, but you know, you learn that there's, if there's no pressuring, then it, it won't, you know, but easier yeah. said than done. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so what was it like working with me? Changed our lives. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I can't sing your praises enough. I mean, it just, it changed our lives. Um, we could not, we were, we were homebound. We were, I mean, if he wasn't at daycare, he was at home and not because, we didn't have lives, you know, not because we didn't want to do things, but we could not give him a bottle outside of this house, not even this house outside of his four walls in his bedroom. I mean, giving a bottle in the living room would have been a step in the right direction, but yeah, we just, we couldn't do it. And so, I mean, working with you was just, it was a godsend. We talk about it all the time. <laughs> Um, but truly buying the package that was, um, I'm sorry, I don't know what it's called, but the one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's what I needed. I, that's, that is what I needed to be able to have hands-on communication with you, to text you any questions that I had. Um, I mean, that's, that's all I needed, you know, and I, I'm sure, I hope anybody who's watching this, you know, has looked at your stuff and thinks like, Oh, it can be solved in three days. You know, it was eight months of hell and it is literally solved in three days. I mean, it's just infuriating, you know, like it just, yeah. it's infuriating, but it is so true. It's the easiest, it's the easiest, worst thing to get over, you know? Yeah. I think it's, um, too many it sounds too good to be true yeah. after so yeah. many months of struggling and probably I would think the same yeah uh, but it's true just to back your point where you know it is it does seem too good to be true that's absolutely true because it's for however long your baby has struggled with it whether it be three weeks 12 months whatever it is that is the longest time of your life and the worst all your baby does all day long is eat. Therefore, all day long, you just have this reminder that you can't feed them. And it is just, it's just awful. There's no worse feeling on the planet. And to truly know that it can be fixed in just several days. Again, it's just infuriating, but it, you know, it absolutely is. And um, for anybody 
watching this that is currently in it, like, it absolutely does get better. And there is a turnaround point because I, that is very much how I felt, especially with my depression at that point in time. I couldn't even see it white, you know, let alone even believe it was going to get better. That was my hope was like, well, it can't get worse. But to truly know that just in a few days, you can literally change your entire relationship with it. That's the only reason to do it, you know? Yeah. So I have a question from a mom um, asking, how did you deal with your anxiety? And then I know you had some during uh, our work together. We worked on that a little too. So that's her question. If you could talk a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, well, I just want to be very like transparent about it. I did get on anxiety medication, um, because there was a point where like, I was, I was just not okay. Um, so that I, again, like, I just want to be so transparent about it. I, um, I absolutely believe in doing all the things, you know, but medication really did help me, but I (laughs) also, um, I have a very supportive husband, um, or partner just, in general. Um, and he has been very helpful and very patient, but I also reached out, um, to you for help, um, with your anxiety coaching. Um, it was one very simple thing that you said that just, uh, uh, just a light bulb went off. And that is, you know, that was all that I needed to hear, but, um, it even now, so we are what June, July, August, September, October, we're like two and a half, three months out of this, out of our um, work together. And even now with, I will have a one-year-old in like two weeks. Um, I still tell what you told me in that session, which is, it's not about the day. It's not even about the week. And it's not really about the month. It's the overall picture. And I was so focused on 9 a.m. speed. How many ounces did he get at 9 a.m. speed? Let alone the day. Like we weren't even looking at the day. We were looking at every feed, every hour, how many ounces he got. And to just have this release of, it doesn't have to be about that feed. It can be the whole picture. That was life-changing to me. That was, that was life-changing because it, not that it went against what my doctors had told me, but your doctors tell you these ounces that you have to get to. And for some babies, that's just not a thing. That's just, yeah. some days he does that, you know, but most of the time he doesn't. And that shouldn't send you into a panic spiral moment, you know? Yeah, I agree. Um, so I do now, I very much focus on the overall picture and not the day or the hour or each feed. I just, I don't anymore. So I just, to that mom, like I I hope you have somebody that you can reach out to, but also just know that your feelings are valid. You know, the, the anxiety is valid. Um, but yeah, your anxiety is valid. I just wish someone had told me that. Yeah. So another one from another mom is a post aversion. So when uh, Will overcame aversion, how long did it take for the volume to increase? Oh gosh. You remember. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe by day four. I mean, it was very quick. Um, day one and day two were not rough, but they were just very much how they had been. Um, so it wasn't that he was drinking any less. He just was drinking what he always had drank. So I would say like probably day three, day four. Um, and by the end of the two weeks, I mean, he was, he was just, I don't want to give a number because I don't ever want someone to compare that. Yeah, but, I don't say numbers. <laughs> um, but I mean, he was, he was very happily drinking those bottles. Um, so I, I was remember very, he was very, very quick to increase his volume. Like it's not, most of the time it's not that fast. So I yeah. remember he was very quick. <laughs> and you have shared a chart before and so has, um, the formula mom, I think you maybe have shared hers also, but you know, that was another thing I was very focused on was that, um, these are just made up numbers, but you know, say he drinks 15 ounces one day and 32 ounces the next day and 18 ounces. Then, oh my God, the bottle of version's back. Like, that's not true. You know, it was, I didn't know that it could be 
all over the map because my doctors were telling me that it should not be. Yeah. And, you know, you telling me like, well, do you eat the same thing? the same amount every single day, you know, no, you don't. And babies are not machines. (laughs) Yeah. But babies are the same way. And nobody had told me that. And it's saying it out loud. I'm like, well, that seems very common sense. But to me in the moment, that was not, if he drank, it wasn't for me. (laughs) Yeah. If he drank 24 ounces one day and then only 17 ounces the next day, I panicked, just fully panicked. So yeah. So now like three months, three months passed, um, how, how things are different? How is your life different? Drastically. Um, he happily takes the bottle. He wants the bottle. Um, I will say, because I don't think people talk about this and as many blogs that I've read, which has been a lot, I still don't feel like people talk about it. He still doesn't necessarily show hunger cues he still mm-hmm. doesn't really cry for the bottle right at 2 30 um he still doesn't do that but we do feed him on a somewhat schedule um and when I give him the bottle he's very happy to take it and if there are times when he doesn't want it um when he's teething we were sick a couple of weeks ago and that kind of threw things awry Um, and of course made me panic again, but I knew I wasn't pressuring him and he just didn't feel good. And so now having the tools of knowing that it's okay. And one day of not great eating is okay. That alone has drastically changed everything. I don't feel homebound. I don't feel anxiety every time I go to make a bottle because like, Oh, I hope this is the one he finishes. That was always my thought, you know, like I just, just one bottle. I just wanted him to finish one bottle and he never finished a bottle ever, you know? And so (laughs) now just having that mental release of a number that I feel in my head or that a doctor, not I feel, but that a doctor was telling me he had to consume every day in order to be a healthy baby and thrive. Um, that has drastically changed everything. And just even with his eating, we, he still is not going to take a bottle in market street, which was always my goal, but he just gets too distracted, but he very happily takes it. And he, if we're at family's houses or a friend's house, I can give him a bottle without going into a closed dark room with a sound machine on and zero Mm -hmm. distractions. And that was not the case before. So, um, I don't stress as much now that I know that I don't have to, and he does happily take them. And if he doesn't happily take them, it does not mean the bottle of versions back. It just means he's not hungry and that's okay. Yeah. So if- and then I have a question. It's not my question. It's another, uh, the last mom's question is, um, how do you know that it's not the aversion come came back? It's, uh, it's sickness or teething or something else. So how do you know it's not the aversion? Sure. Well, again, just to be transparent, sometimes I don't, sometimes I panic, you know, because I'm a mom and, um, I don't want to go back to that place again, mentally or for him, you know, but so sometimes truly I do. I, I have to kind of check my thoughts and say like, I haven't been pressuring him and school's not pressuring him. Um, we did, have COVID a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he cut four teeth in four weeks. Also oh having my poor boy. So, um, I'd say to say, you know, he just wasn't feeling his best. And yeah. if you are doing all of the things that you know to do in the sense of not pressuring him, not that's it. I mean, there's no other list, not pressuring him, If you know that you're not doing that, um, then it's not back. Uh, Even today, you know, he's essentially 12 months. So his milk intake has definitely decreased because his solids has increased. Um, And just a few weeks ago, you know, I had wondered if it had come back. But I know that I'm doing everything within my power, which is nothing. You know, that's kind of if 
if you're a mom or a caretaker or anyone out there and, you know, you're a little type A and, you know, you want to control everything or you're just a first time mom and you don't know that you can relax, you know, that was my problem is that I just wanted to control it. And I had this number that he had to hit and he had to meet because that is the number he had to be to be healthy. Letting that number go, um, letting that number go. And so when things like teething or sickness do come up, I don't have this number in my head that he has to hit. I just know that he's drinking what he wants to drink. I hope that makes sense. It's, it, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, it's beautiful. It sounds so relaxing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just, that was, that was it for me is I had to let go of the control because you can't control them. You can't force them to eat, can't force them to sleep. And if you do, you're in this position. Yes. Um, so letting go of that control and that idea number that is in my head, he doesn't have a clue, you know, Um that was it. And reading blogs and reading Google, get off of Google, uh, reading all of these, you know, your baby should be drinking X, Y, Z ounces a day and X, Y, Z at every feed. And that just wasn't the case for us. And it never has been. So when he does get sick and when he is teething, I just know that as long as I'm not pressuring him, if he were to only drink one ounce or half an ounce. Okay. Well, that's all that he wants. And, um, I think another thing that was helpful to kind of tell myself and remind myself was the more I pressure him, even, even now, even now, if I think like, you know, oh my gosh, that was only however many ounces pressuring him to have just one more just prolongs the problem. Just one more day, you know? Um, mm -hmm. just one more like ounce. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like not that. worth it. You know, yeah. just one more ounce. That was always my, that was what was always in my head. You know, when we were going through yeah. it was, Oh my God, if he could just drink one more ounce, let me offer mm -hmm. it one more time. Maybe he'll drink one more. Si it's not worth it. It just makes the problem worse. It's not worth it. Um, mm -hmm. so as far as anxiety goes, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily go away. You just have to tell yourself, that they know how much to eat. And when you're in it, I know you can't do that. Or at least I couldn't, not to speak for everyone, but I couldn't tell myself that. Well, I could, but it would have meant nothing. Um, you know, I just have to let the pressure of yourself and your baby go. You just have to. Yeah, you sound, sound like you developed some great ways of dealing with your own anxiety yeah. for yourself. Yeah, I like that. I think you have to, I think, you know, a bottle of version or anything else you go through as a mom, you know, you, especially a first time mom, you have to, you have to come up with something that gets you through it, you know, because especially something like a bottle of version, which I do think is fairly common. I think people just don't know what to call it, you know? Mm. Um, and so you do, it's survival. And in that moment, um, I don't know. It's just, it's survival. You have to, you have to get through it somehow. And just one more ounce is not worth it. Yeah. I like that. So my last question, what would you tell the mom who is going through what you were going through and is on the fence of working with me? Don't be on the fence. Just do it. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, it is the best money I have ever spent ever. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we did another program that, um, we also paid for and it did not work for us. Um, it just didn't, we needed that hands-on, we needed that hands-on guide. Uh, my husband and I both did. We needed to be able to ask questions. We wanted to know exactly what we were doing wrong because we'd already been through this before and we didn't want it to come back. Um, but we just needed somebody who could hold our hand that we could ask questions to, um, you never, you always validated my questions. You always validated my anxiety because that's just where I was. I was in the pits of hell at that point. Um, and you validated my feelings. And so if nothing else, you know, it was at least somebody else knew exactly how I felt and what I was going through. And so I didn't feel alone, but if you are on the fence, Tell yourself that 
your life could be different in just three days, four days, five days. Um, and that if take a chance, you know, if it, if it doesn't work, which it will, but if it doesn't work, it's, you know, it's three days. It can't, it can't get worse. You know, your anxiety is not going to get worse. Um, and so why not? I guess that's the question. Why not? You know, if, if you have been struggling with this, like I said earlier, it doesn't, it doesn't matter either way. It's awful and hard. And I would not wish this on anyone, whether it's been a minute or 12 months of this, um, you and your baby, you deserve a chance for it to be different. Um, because every single feeding was anxiety ridden and was hell and was stressful. And then after the feeding, I was beating myself up over how little of ounces it was. And then my husband and I were, you know, we're fighting about it, not fighting about it, but I was stressed, you know, and he didn't know how to help. And so it was, it was affecting the whole, the whole situation at that point. Um, and so if, why not? Why not give yourself a chance to have those beautiful moments with your baby? Breastfeeding was not for me. Whether the breastfeeding slash the bottle caused the aversion, breastfeeding was just not for me. And I, that was another part of that whole feeling like a failure thing is that's just something you should be able to do. And I just think that's an awful pressure that we put on moms because you shouldn't have to do anything. But um, having you know, releasing that pressure and not being able to have those beautiful moments with my baby. Um, and then not being able to bottle feed him either. I do get those beautiful moments now. And I do have that bonding time with him now. And the bedtime bottle is the best bottle, whether he drinks one ounce or a whole bottle, it doesn't matter, but it's a beautiful time for us to bond. And we get to cuddle where I did not get to do that before. So I guess I should say that to that mom, even if your ounces in your baby's intake doesn't change, which it will, but even if it does not change, being able to have those calm, enjoyable moments with your baby, that is worth its weight in gold. I was not having any of that before. I was not able to calmly feed him for him or for me. It wasn't calm for either of us, you know? Um, and so now that we do have that, take the ounces and the amount out of the equation just to be able to have those moments together. Now that's worth it. That's just worth it. Yeah. it. It doesn't, the ounces at that point don't matter. I agree. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for the, the whole of sharing your story. It was amazing. You were so open to, to share everything. Thank you.